In our last video of Janda's approach, we covered the introduction part and in detail about muscle imbalances, how Janda approach is different from other traditional physiotherapy, and what are different types of syndromes. If you missed the video, link is provided in description. You can watch it before you watch this video. This video is the continuation of Janda approach series. And in this episode two, we will be covering upper crossed syndrome, full assessment and diagnosis with Janda principles. Stay tuned. Upper cross syndrome is one of the most common postural dysfunctions, leading to neck pain, shoulder tightness, and reduced mobility. Upper cross syndrome occurs due to muscle imbalances in the upper body. Tight muscles pull the body into poor posture while weak muscles fail to counteract these forces leading to chronic strain and dysfunction. If you look at the biomechanics of upper cross syndrome, the tight and overactive muscles are upper trapezius and levator scapuli pectoralis major and minor, while the weaker or inhibited groups are deep neck flexors, lower trapezius and serratus anterior. These imbalances create the characteristic forward head posture, rounded shoulders, and excessive upper back curvature seen in upper cross syndrome. Symptoms often involve neck pain and stiffness, shoulder impingement and reduced mobility, tension headaches, upper back pain, and muscle fatigue. If untreated, it can lead to cervical spine degeneration, rotator cuff injuries, and chronic migraines. Now, let's go step-by-step step through a comprehensive upper cross syndrome, five-step assessment using Janda's principles. Step one is postural observation. Check for forward head posture, rounded shoulders, and thoracic kyphosis. Observe scapular winging and muscle asymmetry. Step two is cervical range of motion testing. Assess cervical flexion, extension, rotation, and lateral flexion. Look for restricted movement and discomfort. Step three is muscle length testing. Here we perform two tests. First is the pec minor test. Check tightness in pectoral muscles by evaluating shoulder positioning. Measure the resting tension of shoulder using the inch tape method. Second is the upper trap and levator scap stretch test. Assess restrictions in neck mobility. By performing neck flexion, side flexion, and same side rotation while appying downward pressure to the shoulder, this is the muscle length testing of upper traps and levator scapulae. The next step, which is step four, is strength testing. For evaluating strength of deep neck flexors, we perform a simple endurance test in which patient is asked to tuck the chin and perform neck flexion with it and hold it there for a while. Inability to hold the neck signifies test as positive for upper cross syndrome. Next is the strength testing for lower trapezius and serratus anterior. In this test, we assess scapular stability during arm elevation. Patient is asked to elevate the arm in prone position and hold it against a slight resistance. Inability to raise the arm and hold signifies test as positive for upper cross syndrome. The last step, which is step five, is functional movement screening. We are again going to perform two functional tests here. First is the wall angel test. In this, we ask the patient to stand against the wall with contact as much as possible and elevate both arms to make them straight without losing the contact from the wall. And we check for the points of contact and restrictions in range of motion. Next is the push-up test. In this patient is asked to perform push-up. It can be a full push-up or a push-up with knees supported as suitable for the patient. Here we observe scapular control and muscle activation by noticing winging or tipping of scapula. While upper cross syndrome is common, certain symptoms indicate the need for further evaluation. These are called the red flags. Watch out for these signs and if found positive, consider imaging or specialist referral. Now that we've covered the assessment of upper cross syndrome, our next video will teach you how to fix it with the best rehab exercises. It will be the Janda Approach Episode 3. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.